Welcome back. My name is Alex. This is Nostalgenomics. Today we're going to discuss sort of a sensitive subject, sort of a taboo subject in the collecting realm, and that is when do I actually sell my collectible investments? And I know, I know, a lot of people don't ever want to think about selling their investments. They want to say, hey, I'm going to hold these forever. I'm going to hold these the rest of my life. I'm going to die with them, and I'm going to have them buried with me in my grave. And that's great. Hey, if you want to do that, more power to you. Other people say, well, unless you come into some financial hardship and you really need the money, then you really shouldn't ever sell. You should hold as long as you possibly can if you don't need the money. And so I hear that and think, so as long as I'm strong financially, I just hold my entire life until I die and then get buried with them as well, right? So there's not a lot of clear ideas out there on when people should sell their investments. I know a lot of people kind of struggle with this, of knowing when to sell. And so I thought I'd go over in this video some ideas of when to start thinking about selling. There are no one-size-fits-all answers. I'll be straight up front and honest with you right off the bat. But there are some some kind of universal strategies that you can go over that will help you decide when it is time for you to sell those items in your mind. And so uh, before I get into that, I do want to say I'm not going to touch collections. We're not going to talk about selling your collection because that's different. I mean, take uh, here, take my crystal version, right? Sealed, I mean, not sealed, <laughs> complete inbox crystal version, all right? I bought it a few years ago. It's raised in value a little bit, not a ton. Uh, lately, it, it's not doing very well. It's maybe down a little bit this year. And uh, yeah, on paper, this looks like a horrible investment. But that's okay. I'm not invested in this item. When I bought this, I spent money on it to add to my collection, okay? So I don't have any intention of selling this. I just enjoy the nostalgic nature of it. I enjoy being able to walk in here and see it every day. I enjoy having the game and the strategy guide to be able to play through it and, and be able to find everything and have fun. And so to me, the financial value of this does not matter to me because I'm owning it for my enjoyment. And so if that's you, if you're a collector, if you don't mind you know, what the ebbs and flows of the market do and what it's worth today or tomorrow, then hey, don't worry about all this stuff. All this stuff does not matter to you. You hold your collection the rest of your life. You die with it and you be happy. This is for everyone who does buy items as an investment. I use the I word, an investment for the sole purpose of watching those items go up in value and then eventually selling those items in the future to realize financial gains. And so, although there is no one size fits all answers of when you should sell your items, so you can't, I can't say you should buy a booster box six months after release at $90 and then you should sell it two and a half years from then at $180. I, obviously, we can't say that, right? Every item's different. Every market year is different. Every, you know, cycle's different. So, one thing you can do is, I'm going to answer this is what I do, is I have no hard time frames and no hard percent gains in mind going into an investment. And I know, that can shock a lot of people, all right? Because a lot of people think, well, you need to go into things holding at least five to ten years. Have at least a five to ten year mind frame. I don't have that. Sometimes I sell after six months or a year. Sometimes it is two years to five years. Sometimes it's five years to 10 years. It, it, it's always different. And I think remaining fluid like that is actually very important. Um, one thing that comes to mind is Evolutions, right? And so I was buying Evolutions booster box cases back in 2018, 2019 even, I think, for under $80 a booster box. I was paying around $79 a booster box, under $480 a case, just like Battle Styles, right? And uh, I was hearing the same things back then, by the way. You know, all this stuff's overprinted. Everyone's putting sealed product away. It's never going to be worth anything. It's never going to go up, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I get it. I get it. And so uh, I, I was putting cases away back then for under $80 a box. When the spike happened, okay, if I would have had that 5 to 10 year time frame in mind, I'm not going to sell for at least 5 to 10 years, I would have missed out on a lot of gains. I no longer have one single Evolutions booster box to my name. I sold all of them when they were hitting those 900, 1,000, 1,000 plus price points. And so even though I only own those for maybe two years to three years, it was actually a lot better play than if I was to hold you know, long term because right now they're all the way down in the 700s. Um, I don't see a great future for them in the next few years. So I think in that five year mark, you'd actually be better off getting out of them sooner. Now, a lot of people like to say things like, well, if you're not holding that long, then you're not a true investor. A true investor holds for X amount of years. We've been over that in other videos, everyone. All right, an investor is anyone that buys anything for a financial gain. You're not. There's no time frames. There, there's no certain amount you need to hold. All that. All that's meaningless. Okay, but 
there are other items, okay, where you would be better off holding long term that maybe do take that two, three, four, five, ten years to grow to their maximum potential. And they, they could see better gains than other items. So it, it is really, you know, it's really subjective. Um, the same thing goes for percent gains. If you're looking for a certain percentage gain, sometimes you can hit that percentage gain in six months. Sometimes it might take five years. And so to, to put like a percent gain in mind is kind of rough too because some items might reach, you know, 300% in five years while other items might only reach 50 or 80. So you, you never really know how an item is going to perform. And so uh, when you're putting these hard stops or these hard time frames, these hard percentage gains in mind, uh, it, it can really throw off your entire investing mindset. And so I don't like to do that. So three strategies I use when I go to sell. All right. What are the three strategies I use? One, it's going to be deciding, kind of evaluating, auditing your investment and deciding if you still believe in the item, if you still have the same projected growth of the item, if you still believe in the market or Pokemon as a whole, and that, that's the first thing you need to look for if you're gonna keep the item. The second thing you need to ask yourself is, where else am I gonna deploy this money, all right? Because if you move out of an item, what are you gonna have to do? You're gonna have to take out you know, taxes, you're gonna take out fees, you're gonna have to take out shipping, and so after you take all those things out of the item, you're gonna have less money to deploy somewhere else, meaning, let's say you have $1,000 worth of booster boxes. Well, those thousand dollars for the booster boxes, if they continue to rise, you know, 10, 20 percent a year, you're talking 100 to 200 dollars a year. Where if you sold out, took the fees, the shipping, the taxes, all that, you may only have 800 dollars to deploy somewhere else. So if that 800 dollars got deployed somewhere else, made those so same eight to 10 percent, eight or 10 to 20 percent percent gains, you're only looking at, you know, 80 to 160 dollars, right? And so that always needs to be in your mind. Also, you need to always think about when I sell this item, where am I going to put the money? Am I going to put it back in cash and let it lose to inflation? Am I going to just use it in my personal life to go, you know, buy something for myself? Maybe. Maybe you have a house update to do. Maybe you have a vacation you want to take. Whatever it may be. It's your money. Uh, am I going to put it back into the stock market? Am I going to put it into a, a, another Pokemon item I see doing better? And so, you know, these things need to be constantly asked because, you know, um, something you've held for maybe three, four, five years that's already seen the most intense growth it's going to see and then it's kind of starting to level out and seeing that more steady growth over time, it may be a good time to sell that booster box that's three, four, five years old and roll that money into new product that's at the beginning of its life cycle that hasn't seen its intense growth stage yet, right? Last thing I like to look for is liquidity, right? So I'm not a low liquidity guy, all right? I, don't, I wouldn't like having a trophy card or anything like that where... It doesn't really sell very often. A lot of times it's a private sale or a large auction house. You really never know what the price range is because sometimes it sells up here, the next auction it sells down here, and it's all over the place, and you really don't know what the market price is. You may be you know, up 100% one auction, then you may be back to even the next auction, and the next auction you may be at 40% up, and you never really know where you're at. And so while there is great opportunity in cards like that because of those crazy swings, um, I like to stay more conservative, as funny as that sounds, in a speculative hobby like collecting and investing in uh, Pokemon cards, but I like to stay more conservative with my investments. I like to make sure what I own has a good amount of liquidity, meaning I'm able to sell it basically you know, that day or that week or that month. I like to make sure there's still sales happening of those items daily, weekly, or monthly. And I like to make sure that I can get out of that item somewhere near market price. So say the market price is $100. I like to make sure I can get out somewhere around that $95 to $105 mark. I like to make sure I can sell right around market price in you know days or weeks or a month, right? And so those are basically the three things I look for when I'm kind of evaluating or auditing my investment and deciding if I should hold or sell. And so uh, you know a lot goes into it, right? So I mean, you always want to look at where that money could be better used, right? And so say you've been holding a box for three years and it's went from $90 and now you're at $300. And again, I'm not saying these are realistic gains or you know, it's, a box is gonna do that, but let's just say it does, right? Let's say you know, it's a sun and moon box, you bought it for $90, now it's sitting at 300, you can sell it right now. You have to ask yourself is, okay, $300, you know, even after fees and shipping and then taxes, depending on if you, if you have a business set up or what kind of write-offs you have, taxes can defer, but let's just say after the fees, the shipping, the taxes, you, you can get over $200 out of it. Well, then you ask yourself, well, is this $300 box going to continue to perform well into the future? Am I going to continue to see good growth out of it? Or is it going to remain stagnant? And could I deploy that 200 and something dollars somewhere else in the market that those items are going to perform a lot better and I'm going to see a lot better gains off my money in those items than I am off this? Because the way the Pokemon product lifecycle works is 
usually the most intense growth is seen in the first three, four years maybe. And then that second, you know, three to 10 years, that's usually more of that, you know, stable growth, uh, lo lower gains, but um, it's, it's more stable. It's, it's, a, it's a safer, less risky investment, but you're not going to see the, the gains you're going to see in that first three, four years. And so after you've, you know, experienced those gains, you may want to sell those three, four, five hundred dollar booster boxes, move into some newer booster boxes or elite trainer boxes and watch those grow into their intense growth cycle and, and, and realize those gains and continue to repeat that process. Other times, maybe it's a, a PSA card or a single, you do want to let it grow more over time. Maybe you see that, you know, it is a rare scarce item. Maybe you do have, have high hopes for it for the future and you still believe this is a good place to hold your money and you don't want to sell and move it anywhere else in the market. You still think this is where you want your money? Then, hey, maybe you should hold that next three to 10 years and it is going to appreciate for you. So those are just the kind of questions you need to ask yourself. That's what I ask myself. I, I go through my items very, you know, consistently. I, I always make sure that, you know, that that is where I want to keep my money, that I do still have high hopes for the items. I do still see the growth in them. I always, uh, you know, ask myself, okay, if I do sell right now, where is it I'm going to put the money? The stock market's down right now. Maybe I can move it into stocks. Uh, you know, there is some product that is, has that reprinted or it is really low right now. I can move it into those products and kind of take advantage of those, those low market prices, getting it under retail. Um, and then also I like to look at, you know, hey, maybe this is getting older, liquidity is getting a lot lower. Maybe it isn't, you know, safer to keep, keep an item here because if a couple auctions start ending really low on these items, a lot of my gains could start to disappear because that could be the new established market price. Whereas with items that have high liquidity, they're getting sold very often. And so the prices don't jump around too fast. They usually move up or down slowly. And so... Uh, those are all the things I like to keep in mind. Again, sorry there's no one-size-fits-all answer, but I think if you implement those strategies into your investing, uh, it will help you do a lot better. It will help you be able to realize gains, and it'll help you you know, remain less rigid with your investing style of holding forever or at least five to ten years or at least this percent gain, and uh, I think it'll pay you dividends uh, into the future. And um, anyone making you feel bad about selling things and saying you're not a true collector or you're just in this for the money... Don't listen to those people. Enjoy the hobby the way you want to. If other people enjoy it by collecting and you enjoy it by investing and making flips to, to make money to grow your collection, whatever it may be, don't let anyone out there make you feel bad for it. We all have different ways of enjoying the Pokemon hobby. Some of us like vintage, some like modern, you know, some like slabs or singles, some like sealed. Everything's right. All right. Everyone's right. And uh, don't, don't let anyone out there make you feel bad for what, what you enjoy doing. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. Hope you enjoyed the content. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Other than that, I will be back here in a new video soon. I'm Nostalgianomics, and I'm out.